coming up on today's episode of Airborne Unlimited. 47th Annual Air Race Classic about to take off. P-38 Hunt strengthens international ties. FAA invites comments on Powered Lift Certification Draft. Welcome to Airborne Unlimited. I'm your host, Talon Lee. Let's get into today's stories. 47th Annual Air Race Classic about to take off. The Air Race Classic will launch from Southern Illinois Airport in Carbondale, Murfreesboro on Tuesday, July 18th and terminate 2,610 statute miles later on Saturday, July 21st at the Northern Colorado Regional Airport in Loveland. The annual competition of planning, strategy, skill, and teamwork goes back 95 years to the 1929 Women's Air Derby, when 20 pilots raced from Clover Field in Santa Monica, California to Cleveland, Ohio. That first Women's Air Derby was nicknamed the Powder Puff Derby, and the competition included such well-known aviatrices as Amelia Earhart, Bobby Trout, Pancho Barnes, Louise Thaden, and Phoebe Omley. The intermediate stops along this year's Air Race Classic will be LaPorte Municipal Airport in LaPorte, Indiana, Wexford County Airport in Cadillac, Michigan, Newark Heath Airport in Newark, Ohio, Bolt Field in Monia, Illinois, Owatonna Degna Regional Airport in Owatonna, Minnesota, Omar N. Bradley Airport in Moberly, Missouri, Bartlesville Municipal Airport in Bartlesville, Oklahoma, and Dodge City Regional Airport in Dodge City, Kansas. Teams consist of all female pilots who fly daytime VFR conditions in normally aspirated piston engine aircraft. To qualify, pilots must have at least a private pilot certificate and 100 hours PIC, and one must have at least 500 hours PIC or an instrument rating. Additional teammates must hold at least a student pilot certificate. After the break, Ukraine may have destroyed Russian Su-57 advanced fighter. Well, hello, fellow pilot. I'm John King. And I'm Martha King. You know, we've all had our flying lives disrupted lately. Well, King Schools is here to help you stay up to date with courses that you can access on your desktop, iPad, or iPhone. If you'd like a refresher or just want to expand your aviation horizons, we have a course for you. So head over to kingschools.com slant rusty today for details. There's a lot of places I get to at the end of the runway or in turnarounds that I need an engine running. So for me, it's very important to have a product that I'm absolutely confident with. I am very confident with the Trailblazer propeller. And when I'm flying air shows, I know that propeller's gonna be right for me. For over 30 years, the Massive Sport Plane Resource Guide has provided expert, credible information, evaluations, and critical analysis of all that the sport aviation world has to offer. The all-new Digital Sport Plane Resource Guide is coming with extensive multimedia features that are constantly updated, an even more comprehensive online guide to all things sport aviation. Available soon. www.sportplane.com Welcome back. Now let's take a trip around the patch for some shorter stories. Ukraine may have destroyed Russian Su-57 advanced fighter. The Ukraine Defense Intelligence Agency announced on Sunday that it had destroyed one of Russia's most advanced Su-57 fighter jets in a drone attack on the Akhtubinsk airfield about 365 miles inside Russia. The agency displayed before and after satellite images of the field that it says shows the aircraft damaged after the strike. On the other hand, the popular pro-Kremlin telegram channel Fighter Bomber claimed that shrapnel from a multiple drone strike on Saturday damaged the jet. FAA plans on public meetings ahead of Starship launches from Canaveral. Florida residents will be able to weigh in on the issue of SpaceX Starship launches from Kennedy Space Center Complex 39A at Cape Canaveral before the operations are approved. The FAA is considering up to 44 Starship launches per year in its Florida backyard, and locals will have a chance to weigh in on the proposition. There are three scoping meetings on the docket at the moment surrounding the environmental impacts of the proposed construction needed for Starship, the actual launches, and the landing operations. Hartzell launches Propeller Core Purchase Program. 
Hartzell has continued to expand its product offerings for current operators, this time announcing a purchasing program for serviceable cores and serialized parts. The program is open to fleet operators, MROs, and aircraft owners themselves. Hartzell will accept a customer propeller for any GA make or model, and accordingly reduce the purchase price of a new or used piece. There are some stipulations, of course, like the need to include a complete logbook and maintenance history, appropriate 8130-3 certificates, and a recorded time since new sheet. ForeFlight 16.5 update adds wake turbulence warning. ForeFlight announced an update with ForeFlight 16.5 adding one useful feature and a pair of pretty niche ones. Top update is an alert for wake turbulence events, a slick little system that draws data from FLARM and ADSB systems to calculate the prospective wake turbulence caused by traffic ahead of the user. When flying at or above 500 feet AGL, ForeFlight continuously calculates wake effects from nearby aircraft using their position, altitude, speed, weight category, and winds aloft information, then compares these with its current flight path. Well, that's it for today's trip around the patch. Let's get back to the rest of the news. P-38 Hunt strengthens international ties. The effort to recover the remains of Richard Bong's old P-38 Lightning have already fostered some changes between Pacific Rex, the team searching for it, and its resting place of Papua New Guinea. Bong earned himself the Medal of Honor while flying March, his P-38, but the aircraft was lost when it was loaned out to another pilot in his unit, never to be seen again. Now with the industry hungry for warbirds to resurrect, Pacific Rex has undergone the exhaustive process of cross-referencing records and searching the jungles for P-38 wreckage, and they've been fortunate enough to find it. They have confirmed that the aircraft has been positively identified, ensuring the serials match Bong's original Marge. Pacific Rex has found itself deepening the connection between their home state of Wisconsin and their host nation. The team announced that they'd sign a letter of intent with Poplar, Wisconsin, and Medang, Papua New Guinea that will make the two locations sister cities. Justin Talon, director of Pacific Rex, said, quote, Pacific Rex was honored to be entrusted with this important mission and proudly announces the identification of March. We're thrilled our shared World War II history bridged two towns on opposite sides of the world, end quote. After these messages, FAA invites comments on Powered Lift Certification Draft. Welcome back. FAA invites comments on Powered Lift Certification Draft. The FAA is looking for public commentary on a draft advisory circular regarding the type, production, and a worthiness certification of Powered Lift. It's no surprise that the old regs may need some updating now that the advanced air mobility industry is beginning to nip at the heels of established categories. In the past, it's been sufficient to keep regulatory attention focused on the most common passenger-carrying aircraft between fixed-wing aircraft and rotary-wing helicopters. But the new breed of VTOL craft split the difference between the two camps, combining the performance of both breeds into something entirely new. And that's just in the most vanilla AAM space. Stranger things are on the way, with hydrogen-powered two-stroke engines and lighter-than-cargo zeppelins coalescing on the fringes of the industry. Now, the FAA says recent applications for the type certification of powered lift have proposed passenger seating configurations of six or fewer, weighing 12,500 pounds or less, and utilizing battery-powered electric propulsion. There's a lot of hassle they hope to sidestep with a simple publication, allowing them to cast their eyes on more unorthodox projects as the industry hammers out a consistent shape for what an eVTOL generally is. 
And that's our show for today. You can catch episodes of Airborne on YouTube, Roku, or Fire TV. Just search for Aero News or Airborne, and don't forget to follow us on social media. Thanks for watching.